What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Tariq Elite Radio Show. I am back. I was on vacation last week because I was in the Dominican Republic doing my thing with the fam. But I'm back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to spit some hot fire on today's show. Glad to have everybody tuning in, family. We're going to get into some real, real good games, some real deep stuff on today's show. We're going to take a very quick commercial break, and we'll be right back on the Tariq Elite Radio Show. You know, one of my favorite songs back in the day from Usher is called Let It Burn. But what you don't want to let burn are your genitals. That's because casual sex is on the rise right now, and so are STDs. And yes, it can happen to you. You can't be so trusting with people out here. And you want to get yourself checked out. So you need to go to stdhometestkit.com and order their in-home STD test kit. You can test at home and you can get the results at home. And the results come in in less than 10 minutes. Plus, you get instant HIV testing. No mailing off to the lab. No embarrassing trips to the STD clinic with other people you might know that's burning along with you. Go to stdhometestkit.com right now. Add the KFlex coupon code and get 25% off on your order. Step your game up and get your tickets to the Manhood and Game Seminar happening in Times Square, New York, August 31st, 2014. Speakers include dating coach Mr. Lacario, Royal Flyness, and Tell E. The seminar is designed to teach men about the dating game and about manhood. You're going to learn how to value yourself as a man, how to attract beautiful women, and how to stay focused and handle your business and make money and much, much more. Space is limited, so get your tickets now at MrLacario.com. And you spell that M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. You're now tuning into the king of game, Tariq Elite, on Tariq Elite Radio. What's going on, everybody? We're back. Welcome back to the Tariq Elite Radio Show. Glad to have everybody tuning back in. Now, like I said, I am back. Just got back in from the Dominican Republic. I got back in, I think, Sunday. Because when we came back, I got stranded in Atlanta. So it was just a whole big thing. But I'm back. Everything is cool. Had a great time out there. And we are ready to chop up game today. I want to talk about, first of all, before I get into the game... Don't forget to go to HiddenColorsFilm.com. Get your copy of Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. Hidden Colors right now, still the top documentary in the country. Well, right now, actually, Hidden Colors 3 on Amazon, it's the number two documentary. And the only reason it's number two is because comedian, legendary comedian Robin Williams died. And there was a documentary about him out in a lot of people rushed to get that documentary. So the Robin Williams documentary is the number one documentary. And I'm number two right now. And, and RIP to the brother Robin Williams. Great dude. Great comedian. I like Robin Williams a lot. And a lot of the media spotlight is on Robin Williams now. And off of the situation that's going on in the St. Louis Ferguson area. For those who don't know. And again, a lot of times I hate to make my shows too time stamped i like to have my shows kind of time vague so people could listen five or ten years from now and it could still have a lot of relevancy to it but this situation this this story is very relevant to today for those who don't know in the ferguson area of st louis there's a big riot going on the riot it's simmering down now the riot is simmering down now but there was a big riot out in that area and there was a lot of looting going on because a young man was killed it was a young brother who was killed by a rogue cop out there and this young man the kid who was shot it was an 18 year old black male he was about to go to college a few days later and this rogue cop shot him broad daylight crowd full of people shot him like 8 10 times and the whole city is up in arms over there, as they should be. And I want to look at another aspect of this. Now, first of all, we're dealing with systematic white supremacy. Let's just be very clear. First of all, that's first. I'm always going to point that out. I never divert from that fact. Because a lot of people, when you talk about these things happening to black people continuously around the country... 
they like to divert into all of these other things. Well, it's not race. It's it's a police state. Well, if it ain't about race, how come they're not white teenagers getting shot eight and nine times and they're unarmed by cops almost every other day? How come they're not rolling out tanks and police dogs on innocent unarmed white citizens? You don't see that ever. So let's stop with the whole thing about it's not race because we have a race problem in this country that we refuse to address on a national level. Well, those in the dominant society and and many of those in in black America, you get shamed into not talking about the race issue. But again, I always acknowledge that first. You always acknowledge that first. Trying to talk about certain issues with the elephant in the room and the elephant in the room is white supremacy. You're just going to be talking in circles and you never get it solved. That's why we keep going in the same circle over there in Ferguson. The other day they had tanks and dogs out. And innocent protesters had their hands up. It looked like a scene from 1963 Alabama somewhere. We're right back in this circle. We keep going in this circle because we're not dealing with systematic white supremacy. And so many people, white and black, are afraid to talk about this. I'm one of the few. Shout out to my brother David Banner. David spits about this. So a lot of people in the entertainment business, brothers and sisters... Are just afraid to talk about it. I've done I, many mainstream media outlets. They've been writing articles with me. I'm out here just breaking it down. Uh, there was an article again, another article from the Huffington Post that came out today. Y'all check that out. There's about three or four articles in the last few months from Black Voices and Huffington Post that I've done. So you guys be sure to read all those things. I'm dropping a lot of stuff. And in the article that came out today, I actually did the interview a few weeks ago talking about the shit that's going to start popping off with black folks. I, I, this article that came out today, and I probably think I think they probably brought it out today because of the situation that's happening around the country, all of this racial tension. And they put the article out so that, you know, I can people can get a clearer perspective of what's happening Instead of just rolling out the coon train, because again, a lot of times now when the dominant society, when they roll out the coon train, it's gotten to the point where people are openly rejecting the coon train and they've tried the coon train a couple of times and people are rejecting that. They didn't roll out a couple of black folks. Oh, we need to stop. Now it's all about what about black on black crime? Everybody, you know, you know they, they didn't roll out those type of niggas and people are rejecting them. They're saying no. But let's get deeper, as my man Zoe Williams would say. Let's go deeper. This is what we call the King Alfred plan. We talked about this, the King Alfred plan. I've talked about it on my show before. And we talked about the King Alfred plan in the movie Hidden Colors 2, which you should buy at Amazon or HiddenColorsFilm.com. No bootleg. Now, what's the Hidden Colors? I mean, what? What's the King Alfred plan? The King Alfred plan was a public policy implemented in the late 60s where the government wanted to set up a mechanism where they can militarize lower income black areas around the country in case of an emergency, in case they needed to purge black people in these areas, they could do it swiftly and effectively and effectively with minimum and minimal collateral damage. They wanted to do all this stuff and they wanted to set it up so they can do it with minimal collateral damage. Now, when you look up information about the King Alfred plan, now some places will try to say that it was a, it's a hoax. It was from a book from the 1960s that it was just some type of science fiction but everything in the whole thing, uh, program has come true. There's documents on this stuff. It's been renamed the Rex 84 project in the in the 80s. They renamed it, but it's the same plan, the King Alfred plan, where they want they want to militarize urban black low income areas. And notice I keep saying low income black areas. Notice I keep saying the low income area, and I'm not saying that black and low income 
are synonymous. They should not be synonymous. Unfortunately, it's been made synonymous, but black and low income is not really synonymous. It should not be. I don't use it synonymously. But when a lot of black people were coming back home from Vietnam, they had all this military training and they were afraid that black people would use this military training against the government. So they wanted to create a situation where they could round black people up and suppress them very quickly and swiftly if need be. And they didn't want black people using all this military training to fight back because they knew that black people understood warfare coming back from Vietnam. Just That's why the Black Panthers were so effective. Many of those guys were ex-veterans. They were, they were over in Vietnam, so they came back using a lot of those techniques and strategies. So that kind of scared the government. So they implemented this King Alfred plan. And during the 60s, if you notice, there was a lot of riots and there have been other riots. So they've been getting ready. They've been getting prepared. And also, they've been instigating a lot of stuff, too. See, the thing is, we don't understand that we are in a situation where prisoners of war. We're prisoners of war right now. We've always been in a military state, and a lot of times during a military employment, everything ain't hostile all the time. You can still be in a war situation and things can be quiet. Things can appear to be peaceful. But at any moment when you step out of line, the soldiers of the people who are warring with you will smack you back in line. And we have to understand that we are being targeted for war. We there's warfare upon us and black people keep surrendering. We keep saying we're surrendering, we're surrendering and Sooner or later, you got to get to a position where you have to protect yourself on a basic level because we we got our hands up, but we just keep getting smacked. We keep trying to come up with these diversionary excuses. Well, if we just did this, we just did that. The young man didn't do anything over in Ferguson. That young man didn't do anything to get shot 10 times. And they haven't arrested the police officer, but the young man didn't do anything even if you the, the, the cops tried to say he he stole something from a store that turned out to be a lie they tried to lie on the kid basically he got shot for jaywalking he was walking in the street the cops came well one cop came and started an argument with him and just executed him in the street shot the dude eight or ten times i keep hearing different reports some people say it's eight some people say it's ten there's no reason logically to shoot an unarmed person who's standing there with their hands up 10 times. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all say or any of the coons or any of the suspected white supremacists. You can't justify that. And when I talk to people about that, they'll deflect quickly. They'll say, well, they said he was going for the cop's gun. All right, let's, which is not true, but let's say if he was going for the cop gun, the cop's gun, why would the cop shoot the dude 10 times? How does that justify shooting an unarmed person 10 times? So it's not about what you do. It's about where you are. You are in a system of white supremacy. It ain't about what. It's about where. I want y'all to say that with me, family. It's not about what. It's about where. Y'all keep trying to pretend it's about what. Man, if we just stop sagging. It's what we're wearing. It's what we're doing. We're making the white supremacists mad. If we just stop acting so bad and stop being so niggerish, they'll just stop. It ain't like that, family. It's about where you are. You are in a system of systematic white supremacy. That's the reality, family. There's no way to get around that. We have a race problem in this country that refused to be addressed. And it's killing this fucking country. To the point where they have to black out the media to do their dirt. Over in Ferguson, St. Louis, there's a media blackout. They stopped the media from coming in there. They made the media leave. They're not even letting people fly helicopters and and media 
planes and uh, media air devices over there. They're not even letting them do that. You know, they're setting it up. When you do that, you're about to do some real slick shit. When you cut the media off and don't let the media see what's happening, when you black out the media, you're about to get slick. You're about to do some real dirty shit. See, America's like that parent that puts up a good face but beats the shit out of their stepchildren when nobody's looking. It's like Joan Crawford, the movie Mommy Dearest. Y'all go see the movie Mommy Dearest. You'll rent that. Joan Crawford, this movie icon, America's sweetheart, smiling, big movie star, and at home she was beating the shit out of her daughter. Just beating the brakes off of her behind closed doors. That's a sickness. That's the pathology we have in this country that nobody wants to address. Black people are those abused stepchildren. Now, when people start talking, well, you do it to yourself. Well, damn, look at your parent. Look at, look at what your parent is doing to you. If I stop doing it to myself, is my parent going to stop it? We got to look at the race problem. We got a major race problem in the country. But again, we got to see what's going on with these riots. Because a lot of times when stuff like this happens, people are very quiet about black people getting harmed and, and unjustly killed by cops. A lot of people are very quiet about the cop who killed Eric Garner in New York, the cop who people will say, let's just let the law prevail. They've done nothing to that guy. Just like with this situation, people are like in, in Ferguson, People are saying, well, people shouldn't riot because we should let the law prevail. Let the let them do an investigation. But whenever we have cases like that and they do investigations, usually the people who do the killing of black folks get off scot free. Even if it's found to be a homicide, just like with the Eric Garner situation in New York, they have determined that it was a homicide that happened to Eric Garner. He was killed. That's a homicide. It's on the record, on the books. It's determined it's a homicide. The cop who did it has not been arrested. If it's homicide, why is this dude getting a pass? Why is it taking so long to arrest the cop who committed homicide? Why are they protecting him? We're in a system of white supremacy. And the situation out here in Ferguson cop killed the kid for the first day there was a lot of peaceful rallies people wanted to know answers people were saying hey we need to know answers are you going to arrest this cop you going to give us his name what are you going to do he just executed somebody in the street what are you going to do about it people were praying they had candlelight vigils the whole shebang and the police responded by bringing out tanks and bringing out dogs And that's when shit went haywire. People started rioting and looting. And then that's when those in the dominant society start jumping up. Hey, wait a minute. Those blacks are acting like animals. Why are they doing that? Two wrongs don't make a right. Stop it. How come you are not that vocal about the cop killing? That's my thing. Your mom on the white supremacists or suspected white supremacist cop killing the black kid but all of a sudden the black people who are rioting and looting are animals well there's two animals then if they're going to be animals the goddamn cops are animals because the cops are protecting the person who committed cold-blooded murder and they don't plan on doing anything about it so it seems because they're still they're not releasing the guy's name and a lot of people in the dominant society, they will say something very interesting. A lot of people like to say this, because let me tell you something about the riots. Those riots, good or bad, right or wrong, they are effective because it damages the whole economy. It sets off the economy. It upsets the economy. So a lot of people will pretend it's not effective. It's effective. It, it's basically, if we suffer, everybody suffers. And I'm not saying good or bad, right or wrong. I'm not advocating anything, but I'm just telling you historically, riots are effective because they shake up the economy because the whole city, the whole tax base 
they're affected by it because now if there's rioting, there's millions of dollars in property damage. Schools are closed. Just like in Ferguson, they had to close the schools down. They have to ship in all types of other law enforcement personnel. The tax money goes into paying that. So there's millions of dollars being wasted on urban warfare right now. All of that's coming out of the taxpayers' money, and that's draining the city. Now, they don't want to admit that to a certain degree, but that's what's happening. And a lot of people will try to say stuff like, well, why are they over there messing up their own communities? That don't make any sense. Now, people know deep down that's bullshit because, again, number one, they don't own the the brothers and sisters who are fighting and rebelling. They don't own none of that stuff. That's not their stuff. That's not really their community. They're subjects of that community, but it's not their community. Your community is something that you own and control. And I'm not saying good or bad, right or wrong, because they're rioting and they're looting and they're, they're... Basically going out there getting a bunch of nigger trinkets, you know, they stealing shoes and hair weaves and rims, you know, they, they steal stuff that they, they value, that you're taught to value. You dig, whereas back in the day, cats would be stealing, you know, going to the, the gun surplus store, stealing generators, water, you know, they would be thinking in a warlike manner. Dudes are just thinking about, OK, let me just get me a bunch of nigger trinkets while shit is haywire. Uh, and there's some other brothers who are more political minded out there. I'm not saying everybody out there is grabbing up nigger trinkets. But what they'll do, they'll go put the camera in front in front of the dudes who have the nigger trinket mentality, because I've seen some interviews coming out of Ferguson and they've interviewed a couple of young cats and they're like, man, I wish they hadn't burned up Walmart. I got to go to another Walmart. I'm like, OK, this y'all would put the camera in this nigga's face. <laughs> There's cops out here killing folks in the neighborhood. He's worried about the damn Walmart being closed down. There was, an, uh, there was another situation where the Quick Mark store is a quick time, something like that. A quick something store that was burned down over there in the Ferguson area. Then they interviewed a couple of young dudes and one kid was like, well, man, I don't know. I, where, I can't come over here and get my Slurpees no more. I'm like, dude, okay. Now, we, those are the grown babies that they'll enable that's grown baby talk you just don't want to be inconvenienced one little iota because sometimes if you want to get your freedom if you want to protect yourself you got to be a little inconvenient sometimes but i digress as far as that but again this is the king alfred plan playing out as we see it we talked about this in hidden colors too and i've talked about it on the show before now, let me say this. There is a possibility that everything that's happening out there right now in the St. Louis Ferguson area, there's a possibility that that was pre-planned. I'm thinking that a lot of it was pre-planned. Because what I want to do, I'm going to play a clip real quickly. Let me play a clip from 2012. From a news story out there in St. Louis. This is 2012 of army tanks training on the streets of Missouri, of St. Louis. And I'll, let me play, now the audio might be a little janky here, but this is from 2012. A lot of people were kind of confused about what was going on out there and why, what are these tanks doing out here? They were doing test runs, I think, out there back in 2012, getting ready for now. People in the dominant society, they play chess, not checkers. Listen to this, just feel me on this. St. Louis residents, don't be alarmed if you see army vehicles rolling through your neighborhood this week. Yeah, News 11's Dan Gray is live with reaction from residents. Dan? Yeah, Tom, we are at the U.S. Army Reserve Center near Goodfellow and Natural Bridge in North St. Louis. Just up the street here on Goodfellow, there are dozens of army vehicles, Humvees, trucks, tanks, parked in a parking lot. They're there every day. But now what the St. Louis Police Department is saying that some army vehicles may be rolling through neighborhoods in the police department's 6th district, which is far north St. Louis. And don't be alarmed if you see those over the next seven days rolling through your neighborhood. It is part of an army training exercise. Now, that's according to St. Louis police. We have called army offices in St. Louis, and we've called army offices in Washington, D.C., trying to get information about 
why this this training is going on here and what it's all about. Well, we haven't heard back from anybody at the Army just yet, but... Oh, uh, y'all can't see that. They were like, what's the... Even the news people were asking, what are these armies doing out here? And the government was like, don't, just don't even ask. They just, they didn't tell them nothing. People who live and work in this neighborhood say they think the training here is a good idea. I think it's the same way when you go okay, out. Okay, so that's, that's the gist of it. They interviewed a couple of people or whatever, but that's the gist of it. So this was in 2012, and I think you can look the video up on YouTube. 2012. They had tanks out there in St. Louis. The media was asking what's going on. They called out to Washington. Washington said, don't worry about it. Washington didn't even call them back. Now, I don't want to get too conspiratorial now. I'm not putting on the Illuminati lotion and rubbing it all over. I'm not trying to put on the Illuminati lotion. And I'm not trying to get too conspiratorial, but I'm just looking at this stuff and a lot of stuff don't add up. A lot of stuff seems real strange. And when you start putting some of these strange pieces of the puzzle together, you start to see something else. So now we got this situation where they're doing training two years in advance on the streets of St. Louis, north of St. Louis. And I don't know if Ferguson is in north St. Louis or how far Ferguson is from north St. Louis. I'm not too familiar with St. Louis, but my, my St. Louis people might know. And now, all of a sudden, a, a, a cop comes into a black neighborhood, goes into the housing project area, starts an altercation with some random black kid, gets out of the car in broad daylight with a whole bunch of witnesses around because if you remember in Ferguson, a lot of people were around. There were a lot of people around. There were witnesses. People had their cell phones after the fact, but there were a lot of people around, lots of witnesses, right in front of everybody, broad daylight, in the middle of the street, literally in the middle of the street. Cop gets out of a car and executes a black kid shoots 10 times in the middle of the street broad daylight with a bunch of witnesses and the cop doesn't get arrested the cop gets paid administrative leave they do a press conference and say well the cop he's on paid leave you know people are going to get riled up behind that it's almost like they instigated this. They did something that they knew would get people round up. And also when they killed the young man, they left his body in the streets for four hours. They left the body in the street for four hours so it could be sure that people would be taking pictures. There's all types of pictures of his dead body laying in the middle of the street for four hours. Let's just put all this stuff together, family. Something don't look right. And also, after the four hours, they left this young man's body in the middle of the street, broad daylight. An ambulance didn't come and get him. There was a black SUV that came and got him. This men in black government type of car. He was put into this black SUV, not a, a, a medical vehicle, nothing. Not a coroner's van, nothing. This guy was put in a black SUV. Like some secret service type shit. And you can see this on the on the internet. Because remember, when he was dead, out there in the street, several people had camera phones. And there's footage of this SUV, this black SUV that looks like some type of um, secret service government vehicle. Like some shit from the Purge movie. Came and scooped the young man up and put him in this black SUV. And drove off after four hours. So some of this stuff looks real funny style. Like they plan to round people up. Then they boldly said, okay, we're not going to release the cop's name. And they're still not releasing the cop's name. And you notice how fast those tanks came out? The tanks, they rolled those tanks out the next day. Even before the riot. Let's just be very clear. The tanks came out before the riots. You can look at my Facebook page and my Twitter and I talked about those tanks. Right before the riots, people were 
going up protesting saying hey are you going to arrest this guy and they had the tanks ready they were getting shit in place they were getting it ready then they blacked the media out they said no media no media was covering this stuff CNN no. they would do brief stories about it and kind of minimize it but this was a major uprising going on and the major news outlets were hush about it so we got to look at the whole thing we got to look and see what's going on here and now that there's a media blackout there's reports of people in ski masks running up shooting in crowds and all types of other people getting shot I've been hearing reports that random black people are getting shot They got like a full army out there. Now, they got all types of SWAT teams. They got people in military regalia out there in, in gas masks with guns. It looks like a scene from the Purge movie. It looks like some shit from the Gaza Strip over there in St. Louis. This military walking around an urban American city right now. So we have to look at all that stuff. Was this plan? And was this the first real-time test run so they can start implementing this stuff in all cities around the country? We got to get real serious, family. We got to get real serious. I think this was a real-time test run. Not even a test run. It was like on-the-job training. Like when you train for a job, you train for a situation and you do on the job training, like somebody like they want to teach you how to swim and you go in the ocean to swim. This is the real thing. And they're going to work out the kinks and see what they did wrong with this thing. But I think they're going to do it in other cities. On some real life purge shit. And they're going to purge and attack the weakest group of people. This is on some genocidal Nazi Germany type shit right now. When they're blacking out the media, we got to get very serious and they're going at the weakest people. This is why we got to get a code. We got to get that economic game popping. Now, some people might say, and it was a young man who read the Huffington Post article that came out about me today. And I was talking the same thing I'm talking now. I was talking about the importance of us getting our economic game together. And my man was like, well, a young man treated, tweeted me and said, hey, man, well, how's the economics going to protect us? How will money protect us? And I said, OK, well, let's look at the whole situation over in St. Louis now. Look where they did it. Look where everything started. The first place they went to to start this, to kick this King Alfred plan off, they did it in a housing project. They're going to target the weakest sector of society, low income black areas. Not black area, low income. Because just because you're a black person or a group of black people, you don't have to live in a low-income area. You, you aggregate your money and then you go to certain areas that are economically prosperous. But the thing is, if you don't have no money, you ain't about group economics. You're worrying about how you're going to get to Walmart and are you going to get a Slurpee and are you going to get some nigga trinkets? Well, you're going to be in low-income housing and you're going to be targeted for these purges that they're doing. And number two... When you ain't got no money, you have no political clout. Those black people over there who got rounded up in Ferguson and contained because that's what's happening. They're being contained. They're protecting businesses out there in Ferguson and St. Louis. They said this on the local feed because I was looking at some of the local feed out there in St. Louis and the cops were deployed to protect the businesses. They were standing in front of the malls in a single file line protecting those big businesses. We talked about that in Hidden Colors too. KRS-1, he said police are there to protect property. They're security guards for the rich. That's it. They protect property. And the thing is, when you have zero political clout, you you can't reprimand politicians for not putting in laws to help you out. Because if you have zero political clout, 
You can't say, hey, man, look, if you don't stop these cops from damaging our neighborhood that we own and control, we're not going to fund you for your next campaign. So you need your money together for that. So black people in the hood or in the projects, you can't reprimand a political um, figure in your local area because you ain't got nothing but a vote. And it takes more than that. It takes money to back up those votes so you can get an agenda going. We talked about that in Hidden Colors 3. So the only way to reprimand or reward a politician, you can only do it one way. That's from withdrawing or giving your finances or funding. Now, the next thing you need to protect yourself economically, this is why your money is important. You need money to have a media outlet. Black folks don't have no media. You don't have no media. That's why they black the media out and they can smack you around and do everything they want to do because nobody's watching what's happening and you're not able to communicate with other people around town to organize on a mass scale. They black that media out and they're out there purging cats. They're out there bucking people off. They they got all types of jackal military dudes with ski masks picking black people off. And nobody can see it. Just talk to some people out there in St. Louis and see what's going on in the Ferguson area. Random black folks are getting shot right now. It's crazy. So that's why your money has to be in order. We got to get your, your real black media. I'm not talking about a black branch of white media. Because when we look at certain so-called black TV shows and stations, you know, during this purge that's going on, they're showing music videos. And another thing, the old civil rights guard, that type of media, that's no good either, unfortunately. And and I, I blame them and I also blame other black people in the community for not having businesses because now you have, there's a radio station out there in St. Louis somebody was telling me about. It. It's like one of the oldest black stations. But again, they're not going to be in a position to help the community as far as organizing and keeping shit together and challenging white supremacy because you know they're controlled too even though it's a black station they're controlled by white advertising dollars you understand because there are no black businesses to advertise with them see how that works see how the circle of money goes money it has to go in a circle it has to revolve that's the importance of having an economic base not just one person but a group of people circulating money with each other. That's why I always get on cats about the bootlegging and all that shit because that's not circulate money. That's just funneling money and, and shitting on the paper so it's not being funneled correctly. It's not being circulated so we can build a real economy. Money has to circulate. That's why they say money in circulation. When they say that money is in circulation, it has to circulate in order to grow, in order to be effective. And the thing is, I talked to some people in St. Louis and the, the black so-called radio station, they're playing gospel music and Negro spirituals during the whole riot to calm everybody down. That's what they're doing. So the old civil rights guard, that, that they're not going to be effective. A lot of our older folks, man, they, they, they've let us down. That's just the reality. I know I got a lot of older listeners. Look, a lot. the reality is, man, y'all got scared. Y'all dropped the ball, man. That's why a lot of these young cats ain't listening to you. A lot of these young cats ain't trying to hear none of that shit you saying because you haven't created anything for them. This is why they're getting attacked like this. They're looking at you, the old civil rights guard, like, hey, they shot me in my fucking face. They're shooting us out here. What's up? Mom and dad? I mean, what's the deal? Mom and dad, they're killing us out here. We don't know. I didn't do anything. What, what, what should we do? Well, if you pull your pants up and you stop all that rap music. What? Get the fuck out of here, Grandpa. You don't deserve respect if that's all you can tell these kids. Pull your pants up and stop the rap music and stop all that jaw dacking and stop all that dancing in the street. They ain't trying to hear that. Because we, we haven't created an economic base. We have to create an economic base and the older generation did not create that economic base. And this is why 
we also need our economy to get our own militia. We need to get weapons to protect our communities and our businesses when we get them. I remember during the LA riots, you know, a lot of businesses will burn, but you know, I take my hats off to a lot of the Asian business owners because look, they were standing on top of those buildings, bucking shots. They're like, no, no, no. They, you know, they were bucking shots. They were like, look, we're going to protect ours. I ain't mad at you, you know, but when shit was hot, you know, they, they did what they could do. Those Koreans and Asians out here in LA, they were on top of roofs with semi-automatic weapons trying to get it in. And the, the brothers in the streets was getting it in too. Don't get it twisted. But you know, I, I respect their, their ambition. But the thing is, we need to be able to also use our economy to protect ourselves militarily. Because look, when you go back to the Jim Crow era, the people there depended on themselves economically. And many people in those areas, they armed themselves. There's some that did not, but there were some areas that were armed. And a lot of black people would get lynched for going outside of these areas. Some black person would wander off somewhere they weren't supposed to be, and that's how they got lynched. And there were some communities that were sundowned, mean, meaning that they would lynch a black person, then run all the other black people out. These are people who were, they didn't have that strong of an economic base. Now, Tulsa, they needed a military, they needed more of a military base to protect their economic base. That was a big mistake in Tulsa, Oklahoma, for those who know about the Tulsa, Oklahoma riot in 1921. Very wealthy African-American community. Um, they basically sundown the town, meaning they ran all the blacks out because they were really jealous and envious of the success of the people. And the thing that really got them, I think Tulsa could have militarized themselves, but one thing about white supremacy, usually their tactic is to move in very swiftly and quickly. And even in Tulsa, there was a media blackout. Then they cut off media to the rest of the areas around that, that, that part of town and the, the, the rest of the country while they ran the black people out and they had planes and dropping bombs and all that shit. We talked about that in hidden colors too, as well. So the thing is, a lot of places, you got to have your economic base. You got to have a network with other communities where you can communicate with each other very swiftly and very quickly so they won't cut your media off. And that's what Tulsa really needed. They needed a telegraph service where they could communicate with other people independent of those in the dominant society. And they needed weapons. And also... There are other places around the country where they tried to run black people out during the Jim Crow era. One place, I think it was in Memphis, it was a place called Mink Slide. It was a black area that the white supremacists tried to come in and run all the black people out, but the black people had their weapons and they fought back. Atlanta, there was a big riot in Atlanta. I think it was in 1906. They tried to purge black people out of Atlanta. And what happened, Atlanta had, a, it wasn't a, a wealthy economic base, but they had a, a sustainable economic base because, again, those were segregation times, so people had to depend on themselves. But what you also had in Atlanta, you had a bunch of, like, the street dudes and the street hustling guys who had weapons, so they fought off the white supremacists, and they were able to maintain. So this is why it's very important to have your own economy going on so you can have your media popping, your, your militia popping, you can have your, um, your businesses popping. It's very important. And it's very important to be able to work for yourself and hire yourself because the problem now, you got a lot of black folks who are scared to do and say something because now they got to go to work the next day and you got a white coworker or you got a white supervisor and you don't want to make them feel uncomfortable because of all the riots that's going on. Because I've seen some real coon shit in the last few days. I've seen a lot of, I've seen black people going around, not on just social media, but in some of these interviews, apologizing to white people. Man, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed for my race. I'm so sorry, ma'am. This is just not, we shouldn't be acting like this. I'm sorry. I'm so ashamed of my race out here riding like this. I'm sorry. 
my race is just pathetic. I don't know. They out here just are looting, taking all these things. I'm just so sorry. You notice you don't see nobody white talking about, I feel so bad about my race. You notice that nobody white is saying I'm embarrassed by other white people. Have you heard anything like that? You haven't heard one white person say, I'm embarrassed the white dude blew a a young man's brains out. I'm so embarrassed a a white cop got an innocent black kid who was unarmed and shot him in the goddamn head ten times. I'm so embarrassed as a white person. Have you heard that? You haven't heard that, but the coons are always ready to start buck dancing. And the NAACP, my God... They sent out a tweet, the the local chapter there, they put out a tweet talking about we should be concerned when all people commit murder, even our own. It was some, some coon train shit. We should be concerned. We should have the same level of concern about black on black crime too. When you start, when any black person start talking that, get them the fuck away from you. Straight up and down. When you ever hear a black person talking that shit and you black, that's the most dangerous nigga you can be around. Get them away from you. Get them off your page if they're on your page. If you live next to them, you move. <laughs> Cause he's gonna be the snitch. He's going to be telling everything that's going on in your house. Just move somewhere else. That that coon shit has to go, man. We on a we on a uh, uh, we in war right now. We got to get serious about the people we associate with. We got to get serious about who we associate with, who we deal with, who we're going to do real business with. We can't have these flip-flopping buck dancing turncoat niggas out here. We 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 don't have time for that. We got to be real serious about what's happening if we're going to get down. Anyway, y'all, that's been today's episode of the Tariq Elite Show again. I'm glad to be back, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget, go to um, Amazon, get Hidden Colors 2, so y'all can really, really feel what I'm saying, because we go into a lot of what I'm talking about tonight or today in Hidden Colors 2, if you haven't seen it. So get Hidden Colors 1, 2, and 3. And get that game, ladies and gentlemen. I'm out. I'm going to holler at you guys this Sunday on Ustream. Peace.